live from New York. It's a show that I can't believe it. has a cast on like a child. Oh, like, what, what do you want? I'm just saying. What do you want from me? I'm going to sign it after. So am I. Greg Jennings wouldn't let us sign his. You guys, his was cool. You guys can definitely sign mine. His was cool. Yeah. Why? What? It was the yeah, exact If you're like this, thing. it's cool. His, he, he was more incapacitated. I'm out here fighting, buddy. Okay. It's first things first. Uh, today, oh, Caleb headed to Chicago. Basically official now. Why one person here thinks the Bears are headed to the playoffs. What? Meanwhile, Kyrie, left-handed hook that, shot that. to win the game. Oh. Bro, I'm going to ask for an early take. One of the best game winners of... The decade? Yes. Regular season game? Yes. Century? Yes. yes. Only way you can say Ever? well, century, I can't. Only way you can say something was better is just because of the stakes. Correct. Right? But I that, agree with that. How are you gonna get better than that? I right? know. Yeah. Okay. And finally. Awesome. Look, we all know his body betrayed him. Oh my god. It did. I'm, he's had two full seasons. You know what tell me? Where is he going? But what did Sean McVay Sean see in McVay. Jimmy G? Sean McVay? To prove that Brew is once again absolutely right. <laughs> Sean McVay? I mean, this is unbelievable. This is Sean McVay. Yeah. He right. knows quarterbacks. You know, better than almost anyone. Right. Who was so, his last backup he quarterback they just added? It's Carson Wentz, Baker. right? No, it was Carson Wentz, actually. Bro. Well, wait till you see Carson. Carson Wentz in Minnesota this oh, year. <laughs> <laughs> they got rid of Kirk Cousins. They're like, oh, you got the McVay special. Uh, alongside Chris Broussard. Okay. Yeah, we've been too long there. It's Sorry. Too much time making fun of me. Yeah. We start with the newest man of steel, Nick Wright, who's going to have an iron plate. Okay. <laughs> Justin Fields now in Pittsburgh, but it doesn't look like there's going to be a quarterback competition. Uh, I guess so. Sure. Which frankly seems strange. Russ tweeting that the quarterback room uh, is about to be fire. That's good. <laughs> uh, so we'll start with you, Nick. Should yeah. Russ be the week one starter? If it were up to me, no, but I'm certain he will be. And I think quarterback competitions are slightly overstated by the media because of the lack of time. Because if you have two new guys and you are going to need to get at least one of them up to speed, I buy that. they are going to need so much more time in your offseason with the ones. You know what I mean? With the starters getting the reps. So I think a quarterback competition with an incumbent and someone brought in to compete with them is different than this situation where both guys are totally new. And if you give both guys you know, 45% of the first team reps with the other third quarterback getting 10% of them, neither's going to be ready. Mm -hmm. So I do think it will be Russell Wilson week one, but as confident as I am that it's Russell week one, I believe it would be Justin week 18 and the weeks leading up to it. I do not think Russell Wilson will keep this job, but I think he will start with this job on a very short leash. And because I am much more pessimistic about Russ's ability in any offense, much less the Steelers' offense right now with their lack of overall skill position talent. I, I don't think he'll keep the job, but I think it will be his week one. Job. Well, one, I think they do have skill position talent. You know, you got Fryermuth at tight end. You got Pickens. I know they got rid of Deontay Johnson, but you got Pickens. You got two good running backs. So I think they got pretty good talent. I, I agree with you. Russ will, will – well, what I say is he should enter training camp as the number one on the depth chart. Now, if he gets beat out, and like you said, it's hard to have it's a real hard to beat him out because they also don't go as hard as they used to with right. tackling and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, but if he were to, he would have to like really just completely outshine Russ passing because we know running, he's going to be a better runner. But if he were to come out with accuracy, which he's had trouble with accuracy. I'm talking about fields. Mm -hmm. But he would have to look so much better in the air than Russ. And Russ would have to look essentially washed for no, me to move him happen. ahead of, of, of Justin. I mean, I didn't think Russ looked washed last year. And so I think if he's number one on the depth chart, if it's even or close, maybe Justin's a little better, you start with Russ. Because also, Nick – I think it's easier to move from Russ to Justin than Justin to Russ. If Russ were to not start, and if it was a close competition, he doesn't start in the regular season, I think he's upset. His mood could ruin the locker room. He would say the right thing, but it could work against the locker room. Whereas if he starts off, I'm, I agree, short lease, plays three or four games and looks bad through the first four games, 
Then he's benched. The locker room's not like, oh, bro, we got this guy who's won a Super Bowl. He's a veteran. They they saw, oh, he wasn't good. So I think that would be a smoother transition. So, mm-hmm. I, I look, we'll see what Russ does. But I do think he'll start. And if he can hold it, he can hold it. If not, go to Justin. So I Go ahead, Wilds. No, no, Sorry. you go. The, I just – I. Do we agree that Justin Fields should be at the place in his career where he's still improving? Yeah. yeah the, it, the, he is. Theoretically, should be. Yeah, it should absolutely. be. All right. Do we agree that Russ is in the pace, place in his career where he's clearly declining? Well, I think he, he improved from two years ago to last year. Sure. And I think he could de- – now, he's not going to get back to what he was in Seattle at his best, but he could improve on last year. So, so, and you and I obviously feel differently about where he was last year and how well or poorly he played. Point I'm making is this. Can we just show what these two players have been post-Justin's rookie season? So, since Russ left Seattle and, you know, since Justin wasn't a rookie, Russ, yes, has more wins and a slightly higher completion percentage. They have both been sacked the same amount of times. Their yards per game is the same. Their touchdown to turnover ratio is essentially the same. And and Justin is nearly a full decade younger. Yeah. So for those reasons, I I think it is, and I mean I don't know where you stand on this one, Brew. I think it is far more likely because they're both going to be on expiring contracts. I know there was some question like, oh, the Steelers will have to make a decision on Justin Fields' fifth-year option. There is no chance they're picking up that option because they have to make that decision before the year starts, really? Brew. Yeah, they have to make that decision this offseason. They're not going to pick up a $20-plus million guaranteed thing for Justin Fields. There's no chance I, I, they I, I'm not. They, I'm not saying they definitely they will, but I could see them doing it because they're looking at him as their guy of the future. And what's the, what's the other route? Like they're gonna be long at the speech? worst, they're gonna be mediocre, right? No. So you're not gonna get like a high okay. draft pick. So the, I guess the point you I was making it'd is, just be one I, I think it is, I think it is close to a zero percent chance they pick up his fifth year option. But despite that, I think there is far greater likelihood. That Justin Fields is on the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2025 than there is Russell Wilson is on the Steelers in 2025. You would hope so and if so, you're a Steelers fan. And so, right. And so I, I just think, I think Justin will ultimately be the starting quarterback and will finish the season as the starting quarterback. And how he plays in that stretch is what is going to determine if they bring him back next season, you know what I mean, to be their long-term starter. I think they hope clearly that he plays well and he's their starter I think for they, the next several on, years. Well, from what they're saying, they hope he does not play. Well, they're Russ making is Russ the, is the saying. starter. Russ is the well, starter. Yeah. They're making Russ but the starter. You could start Russ. Now, look, if Russ has a great year, they make the playoffs, make a nice run, sure. But if Russ – I think they want to see what Justin's made of out in practice as well because it's good for him to sit – at the feet of – in a great organization, a great head coach, and a Super Bowl champion. Like, this could be good for him to learn. I mean, Jordan Love, I know he started uh, Justin and he would be going to the bench. But still, it was good for Jordan Love. And we saw great improvement from him from early in his career to coming in finally as a starter. So, why couldn't you see that with Fields? Okay. Uh, Steelers offense since Big Ben retired. I tried to find, like, the inflection point. I'm um, like, this is where they're at. Almost bottom of the league in absolutely everything. They've had several different plans here, which including you sign Trubisky, you drafted Pickett, you start Trubisky, you start Pickett. Okay, uh, Pickett gets hurt. You bring back Trubisky. You bring in Rudolph. Rudolph's now gone. He loses the playoff game. Uh, Russ is here. Russ calls Kenny Pickett on Friday. We ran the clip of Russ saying, yeah, talk to Kenny Pickett. We were like, yep, let's get it. Let's be great. Later on that day when the show would like Kenny Pickett's gone and Justin Fields is in, it just feels like a lot of tumult in Pittsburgh. And as you talk about Justin Fields, excuse me, if you talk about Jordan Love, the fact that I feel like it's a little bit of a Packers story that they went from Aaron Rodgers to Jordan Love seamlessly. Well, right, after doing the same thing far to Rodgers. But yeah. that's, that's and unique. this is just so messy, and we but still don't know what what's going to happen. But right. you don't have a good quarterback. No, and it's also what life is like after 
your longtime franchise quarterback steps away. This is why I felt like Belichick was getting unfairly maligned the last few years. What has the Patriots plan been post-Brady? It would look a lot it's like very that. Similar. Let's Sign, get Cam. Sam, Let's get, draft, draft somebody. Matt, get rid of this guy. What has the Saints plan looked like post-Drew Even Brees? weirder. A lot of the same thing. Even a worse quarterback than those guys, obviously. What has the Falcons plan looked like post-Matt Ryan? Yeah, a lot of weirdness. You, you are, if you are a good enough organization, to not bottom out when your franchise quarterback goes away, you're kind of screwed. That's a good take. You know what I mean? Like or the, you, dr- you do what the Packers did. You draft somebody, draft early but you may, and, upset, and, may upset your starter. Correct. And, and also be fortunate that with the Rodgers case that he's available in the 20s, with the Jordan Love case. And with Jordan, I love how Jordan played at the end of last year and in the playoff game as well. I, he is still something of an unknown quantity. You know what I mean? As far as he's got to do it another year. Right. How people yeah. felt about him the first. Mm-hmm. The, the Colts were amazing with Peyton Manning. Then he misses one year. They're so bad they get Andrew Luck. Yep. If that team was good enough to have gone eight and eight the year Peyton was hurt, they could, you know what I mean? They could have entered this yeah. same treadmill of mediocrity where you can't replace the guy. That's weird. Wouldn't so, you say, though, that, I mean, they went from having. No legitimate starting quarterback. Now it's an interesting to possibly spot. two starting quarterbacks. I don't think that's a good thing. Why not? What do you mean? I think it's strange to have two quarterbacks. I, well, I think it's like they Russ don't is, know if the uh, the second one can play. Justin Fields. They, they, they don't know if either can out. play. They don't know if either well, can again, play. If if Russ, let's say they had Russ last year and doing exactly what he did: twenty six touchdowns, eight picks, yeah. top six. They would have had the exact rating. same season. No, they they they, they won a play. They, 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 they may have won more than ten games. See, so I don't. I, so they I, had the worst quarterback play in the league by a mile, and, and, the, and still won. Right, two. and I I understand that. And the Broncos, and again, I we disagree about Russ's play last year. My point is the Steelers last year with Russell Wilson at quarterback or the r- rotating cast of characters they had, their ceiling was going to be getting bounced in round one. And that's what it was. Like, if they had a great quarterback, it would be different. But Russ or Pickett, Mason, Trubisky, any of those guys, their ceiling was going to be bouncing around. Okay. Uh, check in on the Bears side of things. We reportedly turned down a better offer for Fields. Courtney Corrin writing on ESPN, the Bears had an additional offer with stronger draft capital from a team with an established starter per source, but chose to send Fields to Pittsburgh with the hopes of putting the 25-year-old in a position to continue his development First as a backup to Wilson, and eventually as a starter. Your reaction, bro? Well, what was better? Fifth round, sixth round that's not conditional where it could get better? Like straight six-round pick? I mean, if it was that close, then I think they did the right thing because you send a message to players, or at least you theoretically do, Mm -hmm. that, hey, we we care about the players and their future. Because there's already the feeling that you – did not do right by Justin Fields because you didn't put players around him that could help him win. And he had two head coaches, two offensive coordinators. So you may not have given him a chance in some people's eyes. So now you do this. Hey, we're looking out for him. If it significantly was better, which I doubt, but let's say somebody's offering a third round pick, then, they, then, then that's you got to do correct. it. You got to do You got to so, do what's best for your team regardless. So I agree with that. So I might. So this is the scenario I painted to you before the show, Wilds. Because what they got was a sixth in a year, you know, not this year's draft, next year's draft. That could be a four right. if he plays more than half the games. Let's say Buffalo called, because we know Buffalo wanted a backup quarterback because they signed Mitch Trubisky inexplicably to more than the league minimum. But set that aside. Mm -hmm. Say Buffalo called and said, we'll give you our fifth-round pick this year for Justin Fields. I don't think it's bad business for Chicago to say, yeah, we're not doing it. The the gap between the the value on those is not enough, given the fact he is clearly very popular in the locker room. And I understand it's business, not personal. When people talk about the Bears doing Justin Fields wrong, they I, sometimes that stuff bothers me. In this specific case, and I thought Danny, when he was on on Friday, made a good point. When you look at the blow-by-blow blow of it, year one, Justin, you're not going to play Andy Dalton is. Andy Dalton gets dinged. He's all of a sudden starting week right. three. Year two, we want to be the worst team in the league. We're going to trade Roquan Smith. We're going, to tra- we're going to take all our dead cap right now, which I thought was the long-term smart thing for the team, brutal for the player, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. then year three, all of a sudden, it's like, okay, we're kind of ready to be good, but we're also changing the offense on the fly. Those things, I understand why they would be like, you know what? 
He handled himself, aside from one press conference, right? His teammates like him. Yep. Let's not send him somewhere where he has no chance of being the starter right. unless, you know, like to Bruce's point, the return is so right. good, we have to put business ahead of it. Right. And so this part makes sense to me in a way that I, I know there had been some reporting like, oh, they had a two or a three offered to them. If they did, they turned that down back when they thought they were still going to be able to get that. Not right. because they were – they didn't that, have – That wasn't available now. Exactly right. 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 That, that offer that. was gone right. when they took this one and not presented like, well, they could have taken a three this week and instead they right. took this. That I do not believe at all. Okay. Meanwhile, Caleb to the Bears, basically done. Uh, now minus 4,000 to be in Chicago. Other new faces in the Windy City, Keenan Allen and DeAndre Swift. Nick, does Caleb make the Bears a dark horse playoff team? No question, yes. But let me first say this real quick. You know, I'm not a professional investment broker, and I don't give investment advice. But f- it, minus 4,000 would mean you get 2.5% return on your money in six weeks. That's a great – that's a great – that's better than any stock you're going to get, America, if you can put that. Because it is a 100% chance okay. he is drafted by the Chicago Bears, oh, yeah. number one. And so minus 4,000, you bet 4,000, make 100 bucks. Can't do that guaranteed in the market. But now to the point. Uh The Bears are better than people think, and they were last year. And they have since added things. So the Bears, the Luke, or I'm sorry, Iberflus would tell you his defense can't function unless it has at least one A level pass rusher to then have everything rotate off the back end of it. So how did the Bears look once they added Montez Sweat, who is not, that's not adding prime Von Miller, but it's adding a good player. All of a sudden, they were fine. It's not like they were great. They were fine. They outscored their opponents. They had top 10 points per game and opponents yards per game defense. They have now added to DJ Moore, who with quarterbacking that evidently was only worth a sixth round pick, did this last year, Keenan Allen, and Keenan did that in only 13 games. Now I think Keenan is going to be less productive because of his age, but you then add the fact that in addition to Caleb Brew, they are going to, with the ninth pick of the draft, either be able to add Roma Dunze, Brock Bowers, with the second tackle off the board, or the first or second defensive player of any position off the board. Good. And they added Swift. So I expect the 7-10 and 10 Bears, with better quarterbacking, more talent, not the dead cap that had been weighing down the last two years, to be a 10- or 11-win team. Ooh. So I expect them to make the playoffs. All right, so you, you came on strong at the end saying they're going to make the playoffs because this question, I think Nick hacked your computer Why? and threw Dark Horse in there. Oh, no. Because when we, when we talked about it on the phone call Straight this up. morning, it was, are they no, making the I playoffs? I pick them to make the playoffs okay. as of now. So they're, yes, because they're dark a horse. dark horse. I don't believe in dark sure. horse nonsense. In the like hunt? Really. Will yeah. they be? No, no, I'm not in the hunt. Are they really? making the playoffs? Yeah, yeah they'll yes. be in the hunt. But sure. here's the thing. Yeah. I think Detroit and Green Bay are definitely making the playoffs. And that, so that's two in that division. In. So you, I think you like those teams too, if I remember Nick's tears. The, the, I think both of them were the pretty high. Yeah, the, but the Bears, I think the Bears were on the – I mean, the Bears were quite high as they well. They were high. So the if Bears we're going to have three – I don't think you're saying three from that division, but I think I still think Dallas and Philly. I know I don't have like a strange team in here, but Atlanta I got. That's, uh, and then San Francisco and the Rams. So you I, have the same playoffs as last year with Baker out and the Falcons in. That's not going to happen. Well, it's just we'll, not going to be the we'll, same. We will see. I mean, but that's the, the – it's just not – uh, You yelled at me the, when I didn't think B. John Robinson would be rookie of the year. Okay. So, right, I mean, I, I'm just saying. The, I'm just saying. I, the, sure. And so I just think that if you – let me put it a different way, Brew. Because – Go ahead. Sorry. I, no, I'm I'll just saying. Finish. Which one's not making it? Detroit or the, well, They could have three because the NFC is kind of weak. But I think, I think I, those two are I, definitely – I almost think you're looking at it from the wrong direction, which is – Aside from the NFC South, which we think, you know what I mean, there's only could have, have a division, one, right? But no. you, Atlanta what, and Tampa. Could oh, sneak no, in. what I'm oh, let me ask you a different way. Let's just say Atlanta's in. If another NFC team that missed the playoffs last year is going to make it, which most years there's at least two new yeah. per conference, are the Bears not the best bet? The options would be Washington or the Giants, mm-hmm. the the Bears uh, and the fourth NFC North team. Oh, the 
Who am I? Oh, the Vikings. The Vikings. The Vi- Vikings, Vikings yeah, you don't have a have quarterback, have quarterback, quarterback right now. Yeah. We said the NFC South. We said New Orleans, Carolina, Atlanta, and then Seattle or Arizona. Like some people might say Seattle. They got a new head coach. If you think there's going to be a bounce back year from Kyler, I get it. Look, uh, my Kyler. point is, I, I think uh, I think the Bears Dark are the best Horses bet. Is the right word. No, they're, they're, okay. Dark horses. Because I don't think Caleb's going to be C.J. Stroud. Now I think Caleb will be good eventually. And but I think this year he'll show promise. He'll make us say, "Yeah, that was the right pick." But I don't think he's coming in like CJ. So, but CJ, I I think you even if you're right on that, CJ had to be CJ because that Texans team was uh, earned the number two pick on their own volition. Yeah. That Texans team was was awful. The year before, they were a three-win team. No, I get the, it, but you're the, saying because they were bad, he had to be so good. No, no, I'm giving CJ credit. My point is, if we, if the Bears were the typical number one pick team, we would expect usually about a three-win improvement if they draft the right quarterback. My point is, a three-win improvement for the Bears is ten because they won seven games bad. last year. That's not bad. Yeah, I'll buy that. We'll Thank you. I might, I might buy, buy that. So you yeah. really? I might buy it. It's yeah. a good argument. It's a, Who'd you pick to win the it's NFC a good last team. year? Oh my gosh, bro! Who'd you I'm pick to win the NFC last year? And they made the playoffs. They, the short, Eagles. Uh, <laughs> short of the turnovers, we were heading also, in the right Kirk direction. Also, Cousins' body Achilles. betrayed him. Yeah, Everyone knows him. And he's back now. Much like mine, evidently. Most skilled player ever. According to Dame Lillard, next on FS1 and the Fox Sports Channel on SiriusXM. I think he was just giving a compliment. That's I don't think that was supposed to Okay, quick math. The less your business spends on operations, on multiple systems, on delivering your product or service, the more margin you have and the more money you keep. Obvious. But with higher expenses on materials, employees, distribution, and borrowing, everything costs more. So, to reduce costs and headaches, smart businesses are graduating to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system bringing accounting, financial management, inventory, HR into one platform and one source of truth. With NetSuite, you reduce IT costs because NetSuite lives in the cloud with no hardware required accessed from anywhere. You cut the cost of maintaining multiple systems because you've got one unified business management suite. And you're improving efficiency by bringing all your major business processes into one platform, slashing manual tasks and errors. Over 37,000 companies have already made the move. So do the math. See how you'll profit with NetSuite. Now through April 15th, NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind flexible financing program. Head to NetSuite.com slash FTF. NetSuite.com slash FTF. NetSuite.com slash FTF. Welcome back to an exciting show. Kyrie hits a left-handed hook shot over our theme to win the game. Ends the night with 24 points, 7 rebounds, 9 assists. While playing 40 minutes, uh, Dame later tweeting, Kyrie is the most skilled player ever. Well, hyperbole or, or straight up, uh, you want to take this literally? Bro. I think he means it literally because we've heard it before. Was it Chauncey Billups said it? Jay Williams has said it, former Duke player and NBA player. Um, Kyrie is in the discussion. Uh, for skill. I mean, we're talking about passing ability, shooting ability, ball handling ability. That's generally what you think and, of and bag. You think of skill. And, right. And, and can I ask you a question yeah. on that? And do you think it is also graded on a curve related to how Style big and – well, No, well, how big and naturally athletic you are. Meaning, like, you are almost – Penalized? Penalized. It, like, I think the, Ky- the fact that Kyrie's not the biggest leaper and he's not tall, right, right. I think that adds to what people think of his skill quotient of it. Well, but- I, this is what, and you guys may have heard me say this before. Kyrie is an icon. Like, he's yeah. going to be a legend. And his legend, I mean, his legend's going to be above his accomplishments. Correct. Now, you guys know I think he's a first ballot Hall of Famer mm-hmm. and all that. But. Some people, I mean, I think a lot of people wouldn't put him, most people wouldn't have him as a top 10 point guard ever. No. And unless they, you know, win another ring or something like that, he probably doesn't get in there. But his legend, I think, is like Pistol Pete Maravich, who is, you know, view, is a legend. And I think Kyrie's going to be that because he's the best ball handler ever. Some people think he's the best finisher. As far as skills, I, I think I would put Steph ahead of me. 
because he's a better ball handler than Steph. But that's but I Steph think Steph can be top ever. ten, right? Yeah. Steph is definitely top ten, maybe top five. Um, Steph is obviously a better shooter. I think Steph's a better passer. Kyrie's never averaged even seven assists a game. And you could Steph's average eight and a half assists and seven assists some years. So I got Steph ahead of him. I would put Isaiah Thomas, the legend, ahead of him. Uh, and then I think, and these guys are all with Kyrie in the same class. I got to throw Nash, Steve Nash, and Chris Paul in there too. Yeah. Just so, skill. And so I think Kyrie's in that group. But I would probably put Steph and Isaiah so, ahead of him. So that kind of speaks to my point that it is that skill is also sim- synonymous for little. Because, like, it, it, well, because they're the, point guards. They're too, point guards and they are going to dribble and, and pass better. So the last time we had this conversation, I took it in an honest but negative direction, which is okay. If this is true, then it's a ma- his career is a massive underachievement. Mm-hmm. You know, if he's the most skilled ever and has made zero first team All NBAs, one second team, two third teams, a lot and, you of know, that could be injuries, injuries, and all of that. But that's not what I want to do today because I have to give Kyrie credit. Since the Mavs traded for him, and I said, I think understandably, okay, they're just, you know, keeping their fingers crossed. We get the best version of him. They've gotten the best version of him. There have been no incidents. You know what I mean? He has been used his uh, public platform only for good. You know what I mean? Not for division. And and he had always used it for good in a lot of ways, but also had some stuff that he wanted back. And yesterday was the 19th straight game he's played which is the longest consecutive game streak he has had since the Cavs won the title in 2016. That's telling. No, but that but means that tells by, you why he hasn't made more of those Sure, teams but it, it also speaks to the fact that, that for this is, the, this is the best version of Kyrie you can get. You're getting all the good, none of the bad. He's never going to be a 75-game-a-year guy. He was early in his career and mm-hmm. hasn't been since then. Since he left the Cavs, he's played more than 60 games once. And this year, if he plays every game the rest of the year, he'll finish at 60. But he's playing really well. The, his teammates do seem to adore him. The, I understand the Mavs as a team are underachieving a bit, it feels. It's hard to put a lot of that at Kyrie's feet. I still think for the Mavs, was the trade smart? Is that how you build out a team? Those things I don't necessarily agree with. But the Mavs being a little disappointing, I'm not putting on Kyrie. And I just do want to add, because I remember being a little kid and being amazed by when this happened. I remember being a little kid and watching Akeem Olajuwon in the NBA playoffs. And they t- it was a day game. And they talked about how it was during Ramadan. Mm-hmm. And he had to just like pour, put the water on That's his amazing. body and legs. Kyrie doing this while fasting is all, you know what I mean, all the more impressive and should be acknowledged. So, uh, yeah. Um, before we move on, Hubs, can I just show, or can you show the, uh, the shot one more time? Because, the, Brew, the question for you is, the fact that this was a left-handed 20-foot hook shot, do you think that he has, like, he's like, oh, I'm going to go, Luka's I'm going reaction. to go to this. And, yeah, Luca being stunned that he's never seen it. <laughs> Luca's reaction is maybe my favorite part. Does of anyone else like. have this in their game? Well, Never mind, like, I, I, I don't game know winner. if we would – first of all, I don't think that was Kyrie's plan. I think he planned on getting away yes. from Jokic and throwing up a jumper, but Jokic stayed with him. <laughs> and so, so he that. just put up – now, I, I don't know that I'd say that's in his bag. Like, he's going yeah. – that's a regular shot he's it, doing. It is. But he's so skilled that he could put it up and, and made it. Now, but I, I don't expect to start seeing that shot every few games yeah. from Kyrie. He should. Hook shot, <laughs> underrated. Uh, take a look at the odds to win the West. Denver obviously at number one. Look at Bruce Clippers okay, at well two. That's, that's a bit. That, remember the advice we'll I gave America about the later. Caleb Williams bet? The opposite advice on this one. Uh, Thunder, Suns, Wolves, and then the Mavs at six, but they are ahead of the Lakers and the Warriors. So, Nick, you were once in love with the Mavs. Well, they were your pick last year, right? Last year, yeah. Last year, yeah. They're before, they were my pick. Yep. Are they legit contenders? Let me put it like this. Brew, you weren't here for Friday's title pie. Can we show Brew what he missed for Friday's title good. pie? He didn't have a pie. The though. Mavs had a 2% slice. <laughs> Is that them the, next to the Orange? Yeah, next, next to the Knicks. Next. They had a 2% slice. So in the West, they were behind the Clippers, Timberwolves, Thunder, Lakers, Suns, and obviously the Nuggets. I might be ready to, I'm certainly ready to move them ahead of Phoenix. I'm, I'm certainly ready to move them ahead of the Clippers. I'm I think I might be ready to move them ahead of the Timberwolves, yeah. and we'll discuss the Thunder and Lakers. I do think because of Luka's 
devastating in a positive way playoff reputation. And Kyrie right now looking like you keep your fingers crossed, he'll be healthy come the postseason. They're a team people do not want to see. Mm -hmm. And they are, they've won four of five, Brew, and the one they lost, Luka didn't play and it was against the Thunder. So they're playing well as opposed to a team like the Clippers or the Suns who have another weird like head scratching loss this week. And I know we'll get into. So, It is the Nuggets and everybody else, but it is hard to make an argument, in my opinion, that there is any team in the West that has a drastically greater shot, other than Denver, obviously, Mm -hmm. more than the Mavs do right now. I'll be more direct. Thank you. No. Thank you. All right. Now, contender, like, they won't win the West. Well, then, can I? But I'll say, spoiler to what you were they could spoil like a team ahead of them a higher seeds yeah. postseason. Well, right, but hold on. Yeah. They Are could we spoil somebody's the postseason. Thing? Are there any contenders other than the Nuggets in the West? I don't I, I yes, because I, I'm just saying if you force me to like think of other teams should they could beat something the thunder. happen to You're saying they could spoil the Thunder. They could spoil the Thunder. Right, but then are the Thunder Minnes- if Minnesota's healthy, yeah, do I put them. I don't know that I put them ahead of Minnesota. Um, but if, the, if this question the said, Clippers, is, is, are the Timberwolves I think the legit, Clippers are contenders. You, so if this said, are the Clippers legit contenders, yeah, you would, I would say, say yes. yes. Okay, yes. I think the Mavs are better than the Clippers. They, the, the, the thing that's going to haunt the Mavs is no defense. I Yeah. Right? And, and Kyrie and Luka can beat any team once. Yeah, thank you. Because they're so great offensively. Yeah, that's but right. seven-game series with that lack of defense – your two best players not putting forth that much effort on defense, I don't think they – like I said, they're not a contender to win the West. Did you, they did, are spoiler. That's right? good. Did you uh, – you like the style of play. Maybe I should just ask Brew. Go, okay. Brew, do you like the Mavs style of play? At the end of that game, Denver's moving the ball around, and then it's like, well, Lucas stepped back and takes a miracle shot to win the game. They're just the Mavs bald, heliocentric style Yeah, no, style I, I, of I don't play. think you can win that. We haven't seen anybody win that way. A better player, as great as Luke is, better players than him haven't won that way. And so I think, like, it's a lot of Lucas Your turn, turn my Kyrie's turn. turn. No, and, and by the way. And that's you, not going to win. I don't team. necessarily like Everything. that style like of play. That. I think that Luka has been pulled into the James Harden, like, oh, Helios. But the difference is Harden every year of his career got markedly worse in the playoffs. And Luka... Right. Every year of his career has gotten markedly better in the playoffs. And the other thing that I will say is, last year was a disaster for the Mavs. There's no doubt about it. We'll see what this year is. The Mavs have never played beneath their seed. There's never been a year where it's like, oh, since they've had Luka. They they were the f- huge underdogs against the Clippers in back-to-back years. Luka played great. One series won seven. The other one six, I think. And then the other year, they upset the one seed en route to the conference finals. Like, there hasn't been a year where the Mavs, where it's like, oh, this style of play works in the regular season, but not in the postseason. Every year, they've played either two or yeah. past what well, their regular season I think season they have more. Have they knew their identity more mm. then because now you got Kyrie, who's great, but everybody else was a role player around Luka and those teams. It was like, Luka, yeah. do your thing, and everybody else. Last year, feet. they didn't even lose a playoff game. So they I were, said last year. Well, that was, was the disaster. year they did go below their ability, yeah. that's for sure. Sure. I, I, said, I said that on the front end last year was a disaster. I didn't hear you. He, yeah, that was <laughs> to protect them. Finally, Denver. They lost their second game since the All Star break. Oh, my goodness. Should it be time for me to brew to reconsider my no one is beating Denver in a seven game series? No. Thank you. No. I mean they they destroyed the the Mavs in their first two meetings. Uh, Jokic had like 30, 14, and nine in this, the first game they played, which was a blowout. So it's not like yesterday he had sixteen points. It's not like oh the Mavs have the answer. All right, no, he, he, he just played had a bad game. poorly, and they still took a heroic shot by Kyrie to win that game. So you said it. They've lost two games mm-hmm. since the All Star break. You yeah. know, no, they're they're fine. Uh, and and one of those games was in overtime to the yep. Suns, and the other game was this one. Here's the question I have for you, Wilds. Mm-hmm. Will I think they want the one seed? Yes, they you know what I mean. They're a half. Not though. There's not talking the Celtics. Just the one seed. No, in the they West. definitely do. Um, they definitely do. You've talked about how unbeatable they are at home. Mm-hmm. They are clearly. They have turned it on post break. You know, in order to try to get to that. If they want the one seed and they fall short of it. Will that make you at, all, at the tiniest bit concerned? If there is like, hey, this is something we agree they want, they're going to shoot for, they're going to try to get. 
If they end up not being able to get it, will that at all then make you be like, oh, they might be a touch more vulnerable than I thought? No. Okay. Not at all. <laughs> Actually, might be good. Oh, so, so if the ones, if they get the one seed, it's good, and if they don't, it's good. Yeah. Okay. No matter what, it's yeah. good. Gotcha. Oh. So he's all in. Oh no, he's all in. I'm on the way all, all in. in. I mean, just watching the game, like, oh, never a doubt. I got a tattoo. Of it. Well, we're back. Stop saying. <laughs> Warriors Lakers LeBron had 40 Steph at 31 AD at left early with an eye injury so the game went to the Warriors last two minutes of the game disaster took 20 minutes Ben Affleck nonplussed uh, both teams 11 and a half back Warriors ninth Lake Show in 10 he very dis- <laughs> <laughs> he, he often looks like that. Yeah. Uh, what was the number one storyline of this game, Nick? I mean, this is mortifying for the league. Mortif- it, listen, it, was all, it wasn't just the very end the, that 15 seconds took 19 minutes. It was – there was so many – this is a wildly important game, mm. okay? Like, this could be what determines – Who's the 8, yeah. 9, 10 in the play-in? We've talked about the difference between being the 8 or the 9. And in the 9, 10 spot, who's at home? You had the Warriors have a possession that was 40 seconds long and none of the refs realized, gosh darn it, man. This seems like a hell of a long shot clock situation. Like right. the, None you, of nobody, them. Nobody, nobody was like, like what is what? happening? <laughs> um, they, they did something that I know is within the rules. But I, this, it's not because it happened to LeBron. People have heard me complain about this before. I hate the multiple plays later retroactively changing the score. Because the, LeBron hit a three. Mm-hmm. You play a certain way thinking you're down four. And then to well after the fact, after you've had an offensive and defensive possession, be like, actually, you're down seven. But you got to get it right, don't you think? What? I get what well, at what point brew let like, me ask you this like if somebody takes a, a two that we think is a three mm-hmm. and they get an extra point I do think you have to take that point off the clock. okay but you but you would agree with me in this regard that if somebody takes a two and they call it a three right or is let's do it the other way someone takes a three they call it a two right the other team has the ball thinking they're up one. It does and change. Then they, and then they, you know what no, I mean? I and then and there. then you wouldn't say, oh, we got to go fix it. Now the game's in overtime. Like, I just, I don't like that. But then they couldn't figure out the shot clock thing. This is, so, right or wrong, Steph LeBron is still the biggest draw in the league. Mm-hmm. It gets the biggest numbers, all of it. So that, to me, was the biggest story. That this, it feels like the NBA keeps stepping on a rake on about a lot of stuff. And then the very next day we heard, hey, national TV game, so excited Giannis out. Like, there's just a lot of stuff that's frustrating right well, now. Well, that's the biggest. Even this game, I mean, you can't blame AD got hurt. But, you know, so yeah. many of these big national games, some star yeah. is out. And that's frustrating. But I, I'm going to go to basketball for these two, the biggest storyline. I think, look, with Steph, now I, I do think the Lakers with AD beat the Warriors I agree. in the play-in. The size is just too much. And yesterday – or the, the, in the game, Saturday night, you saw they just took advantage. Once AD was out, they just or went like to the 50 hole. Points. Yeah, yeah, they wouldn't have done that with AD. But I'll tell you this, kind of like the Mavericks, Golden State is dangerous. Like, they're 13-4 and four in their last 17 games. With Steph, they're dangerous. You know, I, they can't win the West. But could they ruin somebody's post, like a Sacramento or Oakley C, a team that's ahead of him? I think you got to watch out for him. And the, the second thing, I got to say this, Clay. Off the bench. That's been good. Great. It's, re- it's kind of brought him back. Look at these, his numbers. I know it's only 10 games, but still. Let fewer minutes, more points, and 20 games. And way more efficient. And look at the – yes, he's playing against second unit yeah. players. Oh. And when he's out there, it's kind of his show because a lot of times Steph's on the bench. So it's his, his thing and he can get in his rhythm. So, yeah, I mean, that's big for them. Can I, I want to add one basketball – piece as well because we're lucky enough to do the show with one of America's most notorious and well-known LeBron James critics and Kevin Wilds. Um, Not even top one. The, the, uh, well, <laughs> the fan, I let the audience figure it out. Brew, you agree with me, Brew. He, he takes he's his shots when he can. Yeah. Uh, how, much, how much do you guys put into what LeBron's looked like post-All-Star break? So post All Star break, he's missed one game, mm-hmm. and this uh, his numbers are we can show it to you. He was playing well before the All Star break. Post All Star break, he's played awesome. like you know the fifth best player in the league thereabouts. And the Lakers, you know, oddly, despite that, are still you know just a few games above five hundred. 
But if that's the le- version of LeBron you get in the postseason, plus an, an extra two or three minutes per game, that's the Lakers' hope. The Lakers' hope is that he's going to – not 47% from three, yeah, with but with AD, AD that you're going to get that level of LeBron somehow in year 21. It, it, it looks, honestly, like LeBron can just get to the hole at will. It's and with the floor spread out, it's mm-hmm. easier for – he's a great finisher, obviously, but it's even easier for him to finish because you don't have as many – And some of that is that he's been red hot from three, so people – three-point shot, yeah. Is that one of the best three-point shooting years in history? You got anything on it, Juan? Yeah, you're the guy that's like, you know – what is it called? What? Regression to the mean. He's oh. hot now. He's oh, there it is. Off. I knew I'd get it out. Some more moves out of Dallas. Additions, not really. Subtractions. Tyron Smith signing a one-year deal with the Jets. Here's the, the list. Jets have done a good job with their own line. Oh, Bruce going to be so, right back on I'm the just Jets. saying. I'm just saying. I can't wait. The I mean, Jets so. and Veep run. <laughs> what is like three offensive linemen next time? Here's a list of people leaving the Cowboys. Leighton Vander Esch retiring today from injury. Brew. Do you have a grade on the Cowboys offseason so far? Yeah, I do. And, and I'm glad you said so far because this is like a midterm report. Remember we were in school, mm. you had midterm reports because yeah. there's still more to be done. Yeah. Well, All know. right, so we'll see. I mean, we know they're going to sign Dak and CD and Micah, so yeah. that'll be good for them. But now, you know, my, I would get midterm grades and I have to bring them home to my parents. If they're bad, I get a whooping. Oh. <laughs> All right. So I'm just keeping it real. That's how it was back in the right, day. Yeah. All right? <laughs> yeah. Now, if I was the Cowboys' parent, my belt would be coming off. Wow. My belt would be coming I, off. What? I'm just saying, you showed all the guys we, they we lost. We understand. No, we just, it's just, right? a, you're you just Tyron Smith's gone. That, that's a new thing. Yeah. Tyler yeah. Biotis is gone. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's not even just that they're gone. They're, for uh, Doris Armstrong and Biotis, Going to Washington. It's in your division. Okay. All right, so while you've done nothing, oh, they signed Eric Kendricks. That's nice. He's a good player. Yeah. Yeah. But they lost Leighton Van Der Esch. That's kind of – Van Der Esch has hurt a lot. Play anymore. He's hurt, but, but I'm just saying, like, I don't think it's a – I think both of those players are pretty similar. Van Der Esch is good when healthy. Okay. That's the problem with a lot of them. Tyron, he couldn't stay healthy either. Yeah. But while you've done nothing – your, your division opponents have improved. Mm-hmm. I mentioned Washington, you scoff. I get it. They're not going to be that good. Yeah. But, but how what? about Philadelphia? I don't know that they've I'm telling better. you, that little supernatural funk they were in is over at the end of the funk. game. That's over. That's done. Nick thinks Based that's on ca- what? You, you think that's who they are now. No, I, they were walking in a fog. I don't know what in the world was going but on. But you also don't know room. why they'd be out of it's it. Going, well, one, Saquon Barkley, high character. Okay. He's DeAndre match, Swift he's was match. a bad guy. No, I'm not saying no, that. It, but Saquon, we what's know, is high character. <laughs> He's going to match well. Uh-huh. And they brought back C.J. Gardner. Johnson's, yeah, which I like. I like. That's the what they need. League worst for secondary. The no, he was well, on the team last year. Help. He led the or league in interceptions two years ago, two years yeah. ago two years when ago. he was in Philadelphia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So here's my great. You can improve it, Cowboys. But right now, the it? belt comes off. It's a D. D. Okay. Okay. So this is why, and I appreciate the performance <laughs> of that. <laughs> that's just – how it is. So was this a, has this been a great offseason? No. Uh. But the Cowboys by doing – because the Tyron Smith thing, the contact needs to be. You know how I knew they knew this was coming? Because two years ago they used their first-round pick on the left tackle, Tyler Smith. So they, it's not like they ever expected that he was going to be there past this year, mm. which is why I know it was reported one year, twenty million. It's one year, six and a half million, with thirteen million of incentives. And so they knew because of his injuries, he's a Hall of Fame caliber yeah, player, yeah, yeah. but of his injuries. So by doing next to nothing, though, they had a far better off season than most of the teams in their position, which was not good enough to be the Super Bowl, but a playoff team. Did they have a better offseason than Buffalo? No question, yes. yes. The Buffalo lost their old secondary, Leonard Floyd, your guy Gabe Davis, Mitch Morris, Moore, and all they did was add Curtis Samuel. Did they have a better secondary than Miami, who lost Christian yeah, Wilkins, yeah. who lost uh, the multiple defenders, okay. who right didn't have the money? Did they have a better offseason than the Rams, who had the best player on their team retire? Did they have a better offseason than Baltimore? Who lost Patrick Queen? Who lost Geno Stone? Who added who, Derrick Henry? That, that okay again. I don't think they've you, had a better offseason. Okay, so Boston. I think Baltimore lost more than they added. I think, and I know all Defense of a sudden, is good in all Baltimore, of a sudden, no Dorrance Armstrong and Tyler Biotish 
are hot names on this show. When we talked about the Cowboys. Norris had seven and a half sacks. Right. And I'm going to ask you a question, an honest question. With all the time we talked about the Cowboys all, all year, Not do all. you think the name Tyler Biotish or Dorrance Armstrong <laughs> what was uttered in the league by you on Kelsey this show was once? ever uttered by no. anybody? We'll check. And, Don't and answer. I, we'll and check I would the argue case. they did not have a worse offseason than Philly, which has addressed none of their needs. See, you, and you're Bruins enough. just fancifully saying they're fixed. Saquon Barkley's not going to help them. That, that Saquon Barkley, hold on, who was one of the best running backs in the league, when everybody in the stadium knows he's getting the ball, he's getting the ball, yeah. and they're waiting for Does him. Does he play now safety? Now he's going to go- – Vic Fangio – Mm-hmm. All right, C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Yep. They're going to be – C.J. Gardner-Johnson was on the Lions last year, and the Lions even stung. I understand he was hurt. It wasn't just him. Right, he didn't play last year for the Lions much. I'm looking for brand deals as well. <laughs> Live from New York, it's a show that's looking for brand deals, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Are you really? Yeah, big time. That's it's the what? second hour of First Things First. Today, I know we thought Brew was the last believer in Jimmy G. Well, how about Brew and Sean McVay? Okay. Pretty good company, if you I, ask I me. I don't even need to say anything. That's right. <laughs> I would. I hope you don't. <laughs> Sean McVay. <laughs> Meanwhile. On my side. Uh-oh. I know we thought Brew was the last believer in the Clippers. <laughs> even Ty Lewis saying, hey, I don't know what's going on. I Maybe it's be. me. Is Brew <laughs> worried already? But right now, Justin Fields, newest quarterback on the move from the 2021 draft class, which had five quarterbacks going in the first 15 picks. Only the Prince is still starting, and let's just be honest, there's rumblings. (laughs) We're going to look at the outlook for each guy on this board, and we're going to start with Justin Fields. His passing yards and wins got better every year. Uh, Had four rushing touchdowns, and, you know, 16 touchdowns, nine interceptions, not bad. So, Nick, we'll start with you. Do you still have faith in the Steelers' new quarterback? Faith is too strong of a word because I don't know that I ever had faith in Justin Fields. Faith, to me, Brew is probably more of an expert on this than I am, but something (laughs) you truly believe in. Do I still believe on his board of potential outcomes is, you know, a franchise quarterback? I think it's on the board. And I think that he has had just enough stretches or moments of A-level play Mm -hmm. That he's hard to give up on. So I just pulled the best two or three game stretches from each of his non-rookie seasons. So weeks 8 through 10 in 2022, he had 11 touchdowns, a 109 rating, almost 275 Mm. yards per game. They were scoring 30 points a game. Last year, before he got hurt, 350 yards a game, back-to-back four touchdown games, a 130 rating. One was against Denver, and one was, I think, against Miami, but I might have – Miami was in one of those stretches. I'm not sure. But my point is he is – when you layer the college tape on top of those – you know, not just like a quarter or right, a right, throw, right, right, right. Mm-hmm. but, you know, a couple games <laughs> in a row in the NFL that, I like, if you're like, hey, you can have him or Derek Carr, him or Gardner Minshew, him or Daniel Jones, I'd say, you know what? All, even though Justin's floor might be lower, I'll take him because I think there's a possibility he could be really good at some okay. point. Yeah, we'll I'm with you. I, I agree with a lot of what you said. Like, I'm, I'm open to him. Yes. I still, like, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. But other guys, I'm sh- like Zach Wilson, I'm sure. Correct. You know, uh, we'll Trey Lance right now, I'm Drew, sure. We're going to get to them we'll later. On I'm just saying. So I'm, I, I think it's out there like what Nick said. It's possible. Yeah, okay. it's it's on I the board a in a way. Morning. It's certainly to, a on the board in a way it wasn't for Kenny Pickett for me. Okay. Yes. Agreed. Speaking of stretches of decent games, uh, the Prince started the season 8-3. and three. I really want to punch you on Projections had the Jags at 98% chance to make the playoffs. Prince found a way to miss it. One he in- got hurt. He's the only player in the league. You 98 How many hard. games did he, he play? Oh, oh he yeah. Games. Well, he missed. One in five down the stretch, and the Texans stole the division. Lawrence's last two seasons. A little bit of, a little bit of good, a little you bit just, of bad. Wow. What do, you, what do you want me to do? No, but he's that, bad, then he gets good. Then he stays good, and then he's bad. He was he's hurt. He's down. He's a he was, No, it's just Did wrong. Did he play? He was – I okay, ask out. the question. If you're on the field – That's fine, but, no there's, but it's not like it happened randomly. Say? We know what happened. But ask the question. Does Trevor need to prove he's an elite quarterback this year? Yes. Elite. 
Yes. Okay. It's, right, which is I'm fine with having honest conversation about Trevor Lawrence. What was that honest about? I mean, about right, facts, you know what? Nick, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm talking to a funny six, guy seven, over here. Two. I'm talking to you, Brew, because I think we're going to agree were on this. Facts. I you, think bro. elite quarterbacks in the league, there are four definites and two possibles. Okay. Mahomes, Allen, Burrow, Lamar are the definites. Yes. Stroud and Stafford are the possibles for two different age reasons. Stafford, because we, you know, is he aging out of it? And Stroud, we've seen, you know, not maybe not enough. But you, I, I, so you don't have Herbert as a possible? No, no, no. The, those are the guys that I think are elite. Then I have a group of guys oh, okay. as Could Herbert, be. Dak, Trevor, Jordan Love, Jared Goff, Jalen Hurts, Tua, who I'm out on, but I understand what the numbers are, and I'll include Kyler because pre-injury, some people believed in it as guys who. If they're awesome this year, Went can join the elite category, but have not proven they're elite. I don't think anyone on that list has proven they're elite. And so the prince is in that group where he has to do more okay. to prove he's an elite quarterback. Fair. I would put Brock in that. Can he prove it? Group. Okay. That's sure. a, I mean, okay, sure. he only right, got right, was in the Super Bowl. Just sure. throw him in there. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Um, I'm with you. Yes, he does have to prove it because – Everything you said, I mean, they look, they got they added Gabe Davis. I'm not saying Gabe they Davis. They lost Calvin Ridley and added Gabe Davis. They got worse. Well, now, I don't know. I mean, Gabe. You think Gabe's as good as, as Calvin I don't Ridley? Know about that one. No, I think Calvin Ridley's better, but yes. Gabe is good. And Christian, bottom line is they got a good receiving group. Christian okay. Kirk, not awesome, but very pretty good, talented. They got you know, Kirk and Zay Jones and all. They're pretty good. They don't really have a true number one. I'll give you that. Yeah, that hurts. But they, and then you got ATN in the backfield. So yeah. I think they got enough skill position players. We know you have a good quarterback coach with Doug Peterson, a head coach that knows quarterbacks, Doug Peterson. Um, but here, I'm a little confused because I just hear across the table always ripping one guy. And when I look at Trevor Lawrence's the thing best you- numbers – these are the best numbers of his career. That's actually combining the last oh, two years. Okay. Best shooting percentage or, or co- completion percentage, yards per pass. And the, you on see the it right is, is Russell who is Wilson. It? Is that who it is? On the right is Russell Wilson. So and, and No, no, it's not just Russell Wilson. It's Russell Wilson yeah, last year in a diminished state, right. and you said he's washed, I, and that's better than I don't, the career best okay. so of I don't, Trevor I don't, I don't know why, Brew, you insist on doing this to yourself, because now I was going to ask you a very direct question. Who's better, Trevor Lawrence or Russell Wilson? We'll see. Oh, you we'll you see think this it year. is on the board. I just showed you I, Trevor's I, best season the, has the, not matched the, Russell Wilson's second so, worst. Okay, so you think so you do think Russell was good last year? I you thought do he. Think I don't think he was quite as good as those numbers. But, those but I numbers thought he was what solid. You showed us. I think so you think look, he was good. numbers are numbers. So I mean, think, there is some truth. So you to think some the, So you think Sean Payton made a mistake? Uh, I'm just. I'm glad Russ is with Pittsburgh. Let's put it that way. Okay. I do think Sean Payton. So what's the answer? Where are they going now? Then, so you think? So you think Sean Payton made a yeah, mistake? Yeah, I think should've he should have. With Russ. He wasn't okay. that bad. I mean, okay. we saw the numbers. Okay. I so I'm just saying that Trevor does have to prove it, and you know, I just use that example. I thought it was good. Stan Jacksonville, where Trevor's backup, was once a promising pro bowler who led his team to the playoffs in his rookie year. <laughs> his career, rookie year, 10-7, and seven, you know, pretty good. Since then, he had a defensive coordinator for an offensive coordinator, <laughs> and then Bill O'Brien, and they just fell apart. Do we think Mac is a career backup now? I don't think there's any question about it. Uh, his, here's what he has working against him. It, like, compared to the Justin Fields conversation, right? Justin Fields was considered more upside, lower floor, but more upside right, coming out right. of school. Justin, as I showed you, has had multiple, I know I showed you three game stretches, but Justin has had multiple two game stretches with eight touchdowns or more. I looked it up today. Mac never had an eight, eight touchdowns total in four games. He never had a month of great football. What, how many the, uh, rookie year we won? A, yeah, you, six you got seven games in a row. Okay, and I, I'm just telling you, if you we can we can go through the the game log together. Oh. You're not going to find like where he. You're like great game, Matt. Great game, Matt. Great. You're just not going to find it. And so I don't. I think then you add to it. He doesn't seem liked in locker room in the in the Patriots locker room. And and this is the part, Wilds. I want to get your opinion. And be, what do you? What do they call you, Wilds? The mayor fair. Exactly. So remember that here. Of course. Does he present himself franchise starting quarterbacky? Why? Because his mom picked him up from practice the for other day? all the reasons 
that you've coyly pointed out on the air. <laughs> Do you think he's pre he presents himself as a franchise quarterback? I think that in his heart, I'll say this. Everyone should be true to who they are. Mm -hmm. Okay? I think he's a bit of a jerk. <laughs> and I think it comes out in the game. Twisting people's ankles, trying to spike guys, yeah. telling Matt Patricia to go away. And then I think on the podium, he tries to dress it up. I don't think that's the answer. Much like the key to unlocking my own career. I'm going to go to camera three here. Just be the bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> Alabama Mac. Just be the bad boy. Don't go, oh, I'm trying my best. Nah, man, be the bad boy. Yeah. Look, I, I, I think he will get another chance to start. Yes. I think just, uh, I, I talked about it last week. Marcus Mariota got a chance. Sam Darnold's gotten second chances. You know, guys get second chances. Those guys chances. were top three picks, though. Yeah, I but feel he like still was a first-round pick. He did make a Pro Bowl. Trubisky, do, I know he was a top three pick. Do you think Pickett too. will get another chance to start? Because I don't. I think it was backup. worse than Mac Jones. The, sure, but I'm saying that I just feel like you get more rope. And Pickett was old you, when he came out, too, of college. Sure. You know, so I, here's what I'll say. I'm saying Mac's going to sit behind Trevor Lawrence this year, learn from Doug Peterson, learn from Trevor, and then I think next offseason some team will bring him in, not give him the job, but say you can fight for it. You're in. You you can battle for the. We have okay. a quarterback competition. Yeah. And he'll lose it. And be he, a might lose it. he might lose it. He might lose, but he'll you, get the you, shot. You never know. Shot. Speaking of, uh, Mac and Justin Fields both traded for a six round pick. Zach Wilson and the Jets still looking for a dance partner. We might be headed towards a straight cut. Lowest passer rating last ten years. Uh, it's Zach Brock Osweiler and former Jet Sam Darnold. Uh, so where, if anywhere, Nick, do you want to see Zach end up? Kansas City. Oh! For a sixth. And the sixth is coming from the Jets. The Jets oh. have to include a pick. Okay. Because in order, because if they cut him, they have to pay him the five right, million. Right, 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 if right. someone, if so they trade him, then they, so it's it's that. Hey, I like it. We, we will save you the five million bucks. We want the hundred and eighty fifth pick of the draft. And for the Chiefs, the the argument is the whole because they don't they the the whole idea of what you were going to do last year under Aaron. You can do this year under Patrick. Sit back. No one thinks you're going to play. Have, you know, a quarterback boot camp under Andy Reid. And then maybe show enough in preseason or in week 18 when the Chiefs are resting their starters because they're, set, you know, 15-1, uh, that you can show Get enough to where you can reclaim your career. So I think if the Jets will include something, that's the one I would I like that. that. I like that. I like, I'm going to throw out something else. San Francisco. Why not go there and be – just like they did with Sam Darnold. He'll back up Purdy. He'll learn from I don't want to put that type of heat Kyle. on Purdy. No. <laughs> no, I mean, he's not going to push Purdy more than Darnold. I mean, Darnold was a no, legitimate he, thought of, yes. oh, maybe he'll yeah. – you thought I think he would halfway through the season. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that either one of those would work But a place where he's not expected he can to play right. and has an offensive-minded coach yep. and he has a chance. Against the Chiefs, when Patrick Mom slid to kind of like seal the victory yeah. – it was one of the best games maybe of his career. Yeah, and he lost it with a mistake. Yeah, he, but, but he screwed up. We know he's yeah. going to be almost cut. But passer rating of 105 against one of the best defenses in the league. I thought yeah. it was something. Yeah. But, yeah, if he didn't fumble, maybe he would have lost. Finally, Trey Lance, still in the Cowboys. Josh pulled up this graphic. 420 pass attempts since high school. Uh, to put that in context, Dak had 590 this year. So, Nick, do you think the best is yet to come from Trey? Well, it has to be. Well, you're right. Yeah, I mean, they, listen, I think that the initial question was, like, I think that we were going to do, like, do you, Nick, do you still believe in Trey? And I think my belief in Trey has been overstated in this regard. I picked the Niners to make the Super Bowl the year he was going to start because I thought they could make the Super Bowl with anybody at quarterback and classic two because did you see him in the Super Bowl this year? And so, uh, he was, and, he and, and, and so, well, maybe Trey would have been. I don't know. No, but um, I, I but my know. point is, I, know. I think his being, I've never seen a player written off by the media with fewer pass attempts than Trey. 
Like, if you thought the people, nobody was scouting North Dakota State that hard. So, so it is, he was a one double A quarterback, whatever it's called, FCS quarterback, right. who came into the league and barely played and got his leg broken. So, I don't think he doesn't have a large sample of failure. He also has no sample of success. So, yeah, I mean, he's to me just like a quarterback coming out of the draft this year almost. Like, I don't know, man. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I, I mean, look. He completed 48% of his passes the two games he started. I know one was in a storm and all that. But he did have a small sample size. But Brock Purdy in that small – when he had a small sample size, came right in and played well. I think the word has gotten out, whatever that is. You know, obviously teams talk and scouts talk. Yeah, that that Shanahan – like Shanahan had every reason to give him every single shot. right? Right? That was his guy. I or mean, maybe and they gave up on, or maybe it was no, Lynch's but I mean, but they Shane. did draft him. Well, I get it, but they drafted him and gave up all that capital to get him. Yep. So they, as an organization, they had every reason to make it work, and they gave up on him. That sends a message to other teams. It's almost like the opposite of like McVay believing in Jimmy G. Yeah. Oh my like once God. you post, I mean, it's just a fact. It spreads. Uh, welcome back to the show. Battle of the bad losses. No Giannis. And the Bucks downed the Suns 140-129. KD had 11. Dame had 31. Uh, meanwhile, your Clippers, Brew, were playing the Hawks without Trey Young. Uh, they were down by 29 points in the fourth and have lost four of their last five games. So which was worse? Well, there's a damning quote. By Paul George. It was on the it was on the screen there. Yeah. I don't think we have an identity. Can we show it on the screen yeah. if we if uh, we can? Not good. Yeah. He said, Yeah, we don't have an identity. First of all, with all these veterans, at this stage of the season, with a great head coach, how can you not have an identity? And so, and George, look, a lot of times George, he's just brutally honest. Mm-hmm. And he'll make quotes over the years where he really tells That's you what's you going on the with the team. But yeah, right. Um <laughs> I obviously picked the Clippers to get to the conference finals and lose to Denver. Yeah, and then they I'm not immediately were befallen pick. by yeah. the curse no, well, of they, they were struggling a little before that, but yeah. I'm not giving up on them. But it's been a bad stretch. I think this loss was worse. You said that Trey Young wasn't even there. I mean, yeah. Giannis is one thing. Trey, Trey Young, you know, wasn't there with them. And, and they had all of their guys. And James Harden, all of a sudden, he has gotten worse statistically at least by the month. And it's kind of like as the playoffs approach. Yes. But <laughs> well, I've got a theory worse. as well. What's changed I, in the NBA the last two months? They stopped calling all those jabroni fouls. Oh. The, the Haberstro, or was it, it might not, it might be Ethan Strauss. I'm not sure. Somebody just had a tweet during the show. The average, per, you know, over under for an NBA game in January was 233. Tonight, the average is 218. Wow. A 15 point drop in two months because they've changed how they're officiating. Mm. Who's that going to hurt the most? James Harden. Plus, his regular post All Star break swoon. Plus, they miss Russ's energy. Yeah. Well, Games are never going to be back, tired. Right. Like, and, and Russell helped. And, like, they, they the, do miss his energy. No, and so, no listen, I am shocked by how much Vegas once again loves the Clippers. They have the second best odds to win the West, and it's close with Denver. Yeah. They have the third best odds to well, win the title. They were playing great yeah. earlier in the year. Yeah, they but really were. Well, it, it, they, but the Vegas odds are not for them to be great in January. I might have bet that too. This team well, is, is so. Tough. I think the Clippers are just going to confirm that anybody that makes the Western Conference playoffs can beat them in a series. Anybody. The, I'm going to actually say the Suns' loss is worse mm. because I maybe foolishly thought the Suns. We're better than they are. Like, man, and I know Durant had a bad game, and Durant has been their best player, and Durant's been unbelievable. I was talking with Brew before the show if he could steal Tatum's first-team All-NBA spot from him. Brew doesn't think so, but I think Durant's been playing at that level. But Durant's 11 points and why they lost, because they still scored 129. Right. The Suns letting Milwaukee score 140 without Giannis mm-hmm. is a flashing red emergency light when you are – fighting for seeding in this close to the postseason. And so I think it's a worse loss for the Suns, but a part of that is because I flatly don't believe in the Clippers. And again, I understand I'm biased. I've also been right about the Clippers every year they've had they've been a team. I don't believe much in the Suns and I'm gonna now this is not a good sign because they are fighting for playoff position and they're a veteran team. But I chalk that up as a fatigue loss. If they were to play It was in- the end of an East Coast okay. road trip, you know, they okay. took them lightly, yep. clearly. No Giannis 
and then they just get called out there and get beat. Yeah. Um, Clippers have had several bad losses since All Star. They lost. Remember, LeBron went crazy. They blew a twenty point lead. That's, or that you could say that that was that was just downfall. LeBron being awesome. Or you can say the Clippers blew it. They've had a few funky games. Yeah. What would it take for you to see from the Clippers in these next few weeks? For you to say, you know what? I'd officially like to apologize and change my. Oh, I'm, I'm not changing the pick because I, I think they'll get it together. They have a great coach, all right. And I think with those veterans and coach. Russ's energy off the bench, that's big for them. They don't really have a leader among their players, in my view. All right, and I think Russ is as close to that as they have. And Russ is somewhat of a leader, but they need his energy. So, I, yeah, I, I look. If, if this is I'm a round one here. matchup, don't be I like the Suns a lot. Yeah. Suns Clippers. I know they weren't oh, yeah. playing each other yesterday, but okay. Coming up next, Jimmy G. Okay. Also, check out our YouTube channel. We are creeping up. Honestly, not as many subscribers as I want, but our views are rolling. Okay, good. Medal's time, so thank you. If you're watching or listening. Uh, Denver and Dallas, Kyrie for the game. It's frozen, but trust Here me. Here we go. It was awesome. Here 24 it is. points in the game for Kyrie, including the return of the hook shot, which is probably going to be repopularized in the NBA now. I would doubt that, but it was in one of the coolest game winners. We Probably the coolest all year, one of the coolest in years. Bronze, LeBron, 40, 8, and 9, and an interminable delay that ruined the end of the game and might, you know, change the course of this NBA season. Who knows? I'm just saying it was probably stolen from the Lakers. File an appeal. Silver medal, bruise guy, Wimby, 33, 15, 7, and 7. Akeem Olajuwon trembling as we speak. It's his spot. You know. The, uh, uh, he, right now, uh, Akeem's the greatest international player ever. Yes. He's got a couple yes. guys. He's got three guys coming for him now. Jokic, Giannis, and Wimby. Gold, True. Dame time. 31-5 and 16 assists as he led, without question, the Bucks to a win over the Suns with no Giannis. There is the podium from a weekend of tremendous NBA performances. Okay, now to the story of the day. Who believes in Jimmy G? Well, Brew, obviously, and as it turns out, Sean McVay. He knows a thing or two about the quarterback position. I think so. A one-year deal to back up Stafford. Brew, do you like this for Jimmy G and the Rams, and have you been proven right yet again? I do like it for the Rams. He, he's, I mean, he's a great backup for Matt Stafford. He's not, Stafford's going to be the man. You got a veteran backup. Right, who's not – and we know about Jimmy G. He don't mind being the backup. Yeah. Right, he's a good locker room guy. There's not going to be any, you know, pressure. Like, so I like that. And, uh, yes, I've been proven right. Because Sean what? McVay, that Jimmy G was a good – now his Bro. body's betrayed. Bro. We all Bro. understand that. Sean but, Mannion, Blake Bortles, Brett Rippon, John Mayfield. Wolford, Carson Wentz, Wolford Bryce play. Perkins, and Baker Mayfield. That's eight backups under for McVay in Los Angeles. One is good, Baker. The other seven, the Jimmy idea G. that Sean McVay. The two McVay, healthy seasons that, that Jimmy G's oh, had in his career. I, where'd they go? The Super Bowl and the NFC Championship. Sean McVay knew I'm to get saying, off Jared Goff. He's like, you know, he doesn't have it. And he brings in Jimmy G. Do he we does, have that graphic, Dusty? It. He's not on it anymore. Next. Just to show he, he used to be on it. <laughs>